Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA, is an implementation of Microsoft's event-driven programming language, Visual Basic 6.0, built into most desktop Microsoft Office applications. Although based on a pre-net Visual Basic, which no longer supported by updated by Microsoft, the VBA implementation in Office continues to be updated to support new Office features. VBA is used for professional and end-user development due to its perceived easy-to-use Office's vast installed user base and extensive legacy in business. Visual Basic for Applications enables building user-defined functions or UDFS, automating processes, and accessing Windows API and other low-level functionality. Although through dynamic link libraries or DLLs, it supersedes and expands on the abilities of earlier application specific macro programming languages such as worlds world basic it can be used to control many aspects of the host application including manipulating user interface features such as menus and toolbars and working with custom user forms or dialog boxes as its name suggests VBA is closely related to Visual Basic and uses the Visual Basic runtime library. However, VBA code normally can only run within a host application rather than a standalone program. VBA can, however, control one application from another using OLE automation. For example, VBA can automatically create a Microsoft Word report from Microsoft Excel data that Excel collects automatically from the polled sensors. VBA can use but not create ActiveX slash COM DLLs and later versions add support for class modules. Now let's discuss the uses of VBA and what are the users of VBA. There are mainly three types of users of VBA which is general users, computer professionals and corporate users. General users are basically the ones like us who are using the VBA for uh, making day-to-day -day tasks or any other stuff which we need to do it repeatedly and uh, one can also execute any type of code using the VBA in Excel with a single click and that is very fairly easy for the general users to execute any type of uh, command using the Excel. Now let's discuss the second part which is computer professionals. Computer professionals are the users that are using VBA in a much advanced levels like coding and other stuff you know so they can use the VBA to do much more advanced codings uh, in order to um, excel in the Excel VBA. So mainly for example if someone wants to add in a new function in the Excel uh, a computer professional he can write a code in the VBA sheet and just basically function it through it there and the Excel will uh, respond to the correct command and now let's move on to number three which is the corporate users of Excel VBA or VBA in general so the corporate users of VBA uh, are mainly the ones that are using VBA for purposes like maintaining their salaries or any type of um, let's say sheets that they need to uh, follow any schedule or any other official stuff so anything corporate users that are using daily basis these excel files and other sheets so these are basically the corporate users of vba and uh, 
in the next lesson we're going to start by i'm going to start by showing you uh, what what are the functions of vba and how we're going to start up vba using the excel so stay tuned for our lessons so i'm going to begin our first lesson in the next video okay so excel vba excel vba is an interface so we use this in other microsoft applications but you can also use it in excel as well so basically vba is this um bar you can see here the tab that is open here this interface now you can see if you if you look closely you can see that these icons they look a bit old like old school right uh, it's because this is the visual microsoft visual basics for applications and here we can add some codes and if we look down here on the name you can see that it's sheet one and here we can also see sheet one so this vba window is for this sheet sheet one now there is some other things here as well uh, when we start coding there will be another tab open here which is called the module but it's not open right now because we don't have any code right now now vba basically if i for example if i type in one two three four five six seven eight and if i want to sum it up we already have a feature here to sum all of these up right so if we just go here and type in sum use the bracket add all of these together close the bracket and press enter you can see that these are all summed up okay now if i go to the value here if you look here it says sum but what if i want to add them you know add them so i could just type in plus right what happens if i type in plus and then press enter you can see here if we go here in this uh, box you can see it's written the formula contains unrecognized text so it's basically like that you know it doesn't work like that it has no plus formula for this uh, interface so only the sum here okay so now in vba i want if i want i can add a plus theory here in vba right so if i want to make a theory or a theory like sum i can use the vba format here and make it so you can do it in any other application of microsoft like powerpoint or word so that's basically vba okay now you may be wondering how i got this vba bar right or whatever you want to call it now if i look here in my mouse if you take a look here you can see that there are files and then there's home insert page layout formulas all of these are ribbons okay and we have a neat bar here as well and it said tell me what you want to do now here uh, we're gonna take a look at this part later but first i'm going to show you how to get the vba bar now to do that we're going to go to the file and in the file you can see there are so many interfaces here so we're going to go to the bottom and in the bottom we can see that there is account and options we're going to select the options okay once i click on the options there will be a bar here as well a tab opened here and there are general formulas data proofing and other stuff but what we want to look at here is the customize ribbon all right so these are all ribbons here and we want to customize the ribbon and when i click on the customized ribbon you can see here there are many tabs on the far left right side so there are main tabs here and there are some tabs that are not ticked okay so 
in this particular one the developer tab we're going to tap on the developer tab okay so once we've done that we're going to select the okay and here you can see that there is a ribbon here named the developer okay now inside the developer tab ribbon or whatever you want to call it so here we can see that there are some features here like record macro use relative references and then this visual basic and macro so this visual basics here this is the visual basics application tab so we're going to click on this and once we've uh, tapped it this tab has opened so that is how you open the visual basics for application tab all right hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba so we were currently learning about the macro recorder and i showed what the macro recorder does and in this lesson we're going to learn about the cell references okay so what are the cell references there are basically two types of cell references relative and absolute relative and absolute cell references behave differently when copied and filled to other cells relative references change when a formula is copied to another cell absolute references on the other hand remain constant no matter where they are copied so basically if you want an example of relative reference for instance if i click on this cell you can see here that it's said d4 so this is a relative reference and absolute reference on the other hand is different you see absolute is totally absolute so if i type in anything like let's say one two three four five and then i type in five six eight nine seven so if i want to add it up or sum it up or whatever i want to do let's say i want to sum this and i'm going to use this to and then i'm going to close the bracket out and you can see here it's added up right so if i want to add everything up i'm going to use this and it adds it up right so this is uh, basically the cell absolute cell reference uh, not every time the values will be the same but the idea remains the same okay so this is the absolute cell reference now i'm going to create another lesson on this with a bit more explaining and a better example so stay tuned for that lesson and i'm going to go right right away to it and i'll see you in the next lesson okay hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba so in this lesson we're going to learn about the basics you know the intro to editing macro all right in our last lesson we learned how to uh, do the manual and auto macro and codings in this lesson we're going to learn about editing the macros okay now to do that we first have this um, interface here that I created in our last lesson and basically we're gonna use the macro recorder again uh, but I, I told you that this uh, the macro recording would have been ended in the last lesson but uh, we, we're gonna need it a bit more as well so in this lesson first if I open this uh, visual basics basically just go to the developer tab and you will find the visual basic right here and click on it now here down here you can see the code that was written at the first lesson and here you can see that sheet one two three four five and this workbook here but if I click on the module here, you can see that there has been no code because I deleted all the macros from before. So there is no code here for this module, okay? If you have any code, it's no problem. Uh, just delete it or uh, just delete the macros as well, okay? So now that we've understood the VBA part of this 
lesson. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, select all of these and we're going to record the macro. And let me start off the macro first. Record macro, macro 8. I'm going to name this control X. Okay. And then we're going to go to uh, the home and we're going to select all of these items right here. Okay. Once we select them, we're going to apply, let's say, a font which is, we're going to apply a real black and then we're going to, okay. Now, if we check on the VBA, you can see that there is this uh, sheet 5 and the codes are written here, right? And we already know, and we already know that there are these codes, some of these codes, these are unnecessary. So we can just delete them. Um, there we go. Okay. So after we've done that, we can see that there is these. Uh, quotation marks over here and mm, we can also apply these quotation marks like if I do this and then mm, apply a quotation mark here don't use the double quotation mark or else it won't work use the single quotation mark and this one and also this one. This is basically commenting on this uh, code here. We can also apply it to this one. Basically, you can apply it to every single line here, quotation marks, and it will just keep happening. And with this one as well. Okay. Now this is basically the code of the Excel that we're currently working on. This one in general. Okay, the module. If we click on the module, it will bring us here. Okay, so you can see here that uh, the cells selected with selection font, the name of the font is Arial Black, which we applied here, the Arial Black here, and we also have the size which is 16 we can also increase it if we want like if i want it to be 18 and go to the vba and if i just run it again go to the developer tab and if we run it again you can see that this is turned to like Let's say the 18, we applied the 18, and we can just do it manually as well. 18, all right. So that's basically the editing of the macros. You can edit any code that you want, you can edit it with anything, any of this. For instance, if you don't have any function here, you can make it through this VBA function, okay? Make the function to your liking. So now that I've selected all the data here, you can see that this is the data from this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another macro, okay? To do that, um, I'm just going to go <coughs> to the developer tab, stop recording. Okay, so we already have a macro here. So you already have a macro here. Uh, let's say uh, we're going to record the macro. So start recording macro 9, and I'm going to use control plus V this time. Okay, so it's showing a an error that it can't record okay so since it's still recording we're going to go to the VBA 
and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to minimize this so I can see what's going on here okay so we're going to be working on the both sides and let me just fix it like this okay okay so since we have this uh <coughs> since we have this uh macro going on recording we're going to change this outline and we you can see as soon as i selected it it went to home and you you can see that there is another interface here which is called the macro 9 macro keyboard shortcut okay so whatever we do here if i change it change this to like let's say this one okay you can see that it's changed to this as well the name is this one and if we if we like uh wanted to change anything else you can see here so now that we have our code here what i'm going to do here is i'm going to um comment on all of these that we don't need which are unnecessary since this uh, is necessary here style or size it's necessary i'm going to keep them all of these that are written false are unnecessary so i'm just going to comment them down all right <clears throat> okay also these now i'm going to comment on this one as well and with okay and once i've commented on this since i've commented on the end with now i'm going to press on play now you can see that there is a compile error invalid outside procedure okay so why is that with selection font okay i'm going to go back here and i'm going to like delete this one okay and then I'm going to go back to here and I applied a quotation mark here as well. Okay, so if I play now, it still says outside compile error, outside procedure. Okay, so basically, we're going to apply this. All right. Now, once I've played this, I'm going to run it. Again, it's saying, okay. So basically, what we have to do here is we're going to just apply this one. Sub macro 9. And sub this one as well. Okay, so basically that is the way you can change the macros inside, all right, and you can edit them as well in in through this macros, okay, so I'm gonna go into our next lesson right away, okay, so stay tuned. So in our last lesson, we learned about uh, how to edit macros. And I'm going to show you a bit more today again. And in this lesson, I'm going to select this uh, whole chart and we're going to go to the developer tab and we're going to record this macro. Okay. And then we're going to go to the Visual Basic. And here, first, we're going to change the We change the font to 18 and also we're going to change the font uh, style as well and we're going to take it with this one all right now if we go to the visual basic we can see here that the macro 3 here which is recording right now uh, with selection font name is whatever we have here right here is this one 
and then we also have the size of this is 18 now we can also change it from here as well now if i just give it as 20 and play it well you can see that the font size has changed instantly right here you can see it the font size changes instantly so that's how you like change the font or edit the font using the vba you know it's pretty easy you need to just practice and if you have any problem please let me know i'm always here to help and i'll see you in the next lesson hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba so in this lesson we're finally going to learn about the macros and uh, how they are built from scratch so we're going to make macros from the scratch as well all right so in our previous lessons we learned the basics of macros and other stuff okay so now we already have these interfaces and if i go to the developer tab which i'm already at and go to macros you can see we have one macro saved and if i go to the visual basics well you can see that there is the one macro that is saved here and there is a lot of data around this place right yeah so and in the far left you can see that there is one particular uh, option here which is module and in the module uh, you can see the module has is showing all the codes that are written for the VBA okay now what I want to do here is I want to make another macro uh, from scratch and to do that I don't I'm not going to use the macro recorder right away okay so if I go here and then back here all right so first off let me delete these macros uh, I'm deleting this one okay I don't need to delete it uh, I'll just I'll just keep it and then if I go to the developer tab and bring in the visual basics application and um, I would go here and insert and in insert you can see here there is an option called module now I'm going to open a new module here once I do that there is another uh, blank space here so you can see in the far left there is module 2 right and in module 2 I'm going to add another thing which is the procedure you can see here when I go to the insert the first option is procedure and once I click on the procedure there are a few uh, interfaces here like type and scope so after I clicked on the procedure you can see that there are some uh, types here type and scope so I'm gonna uh, explain this and in the type you can see that there is this sub uh, selected right so the sub is basically the one that we're using right now the basic macros the small form of macros or whatever you want to tell it so once uh, now that we know this what the sub is the function is like the higher form of the macros and we use this functions when we want to add some other functions or other um, codes uh, and then property is basically the function of verb you know uh, I said this in the other lessons and it's part of the verb okay now next we have is the scope now in the scope we have two options here now the scope is basically if the public is uh, if it's given public then uh, anyone can see it and you can use it from anywhere and if you keep it in private then no one can access it other than you okay so that's basically the procedure functions now once we click on the procedure uh, we're going to set a name now for one thing here in the procedure setting the name could be tricky you cannot give any numeric numbers first if you want to give any numeric numbers it will show an error like for instance I want to name this module first uh, first macro okay I want to name this module first macro and if I add like first 
underscore macro and if I press OK you can see that it says invalid procedure name so you cannot add any you cannot add any numeric numbers so uh, other than that I want to I'm going to add in first in letters okay and pressing OK you can see that the function is started and we have our module here and the VBA starts here okay so we're going to create some space and we're going to work here and add some functions so now I'm going to add some codes over here okay now for the codes I'm going to use uh, let's say I'm going to add some rows so let me add some rows here and first I'm going to use the open parenthesis and inside I'm going to type in uh, first double quotation and inside I'm going to type in one is to one is to one and then close the double quotation close parenthesis all right and then I'm going to add in dot insert Okay, after I've done that, I'm going to add some more. Like, so once we've uh, typed in this, we're going to apply it as uh, step into. I'm going to see it. So now you can see in the uh, in our Excel, you can see that the gap has created and it's working, which means it's working. So we're going to end this and then we're going to add some columns here okay so now that we've got our rows in place what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, apply some of these text onto here okay now some text uh, i'm going to add in some rows uh, not some rows i'm going to add in some range and to add in the range i'm going to type in range and then open parenthesis double quotation and i want to add it in a1 right here right so uh, i'm going to type in let's say double quotation and then i'm going to type in a1 close the double quotation and then close parenthesis Okay, then add close parenthesis. All right, and now I'm going to type in dot value. Okay, and here after that, I'm going to type in equal double quotation and injury. location location all right and then i'm going to close with the double quotation and after that we're going to type in another range okay same process open parenthesis and this time i'm going to type in let's say b1 yes it's going to be b1 double quotation and then dot value all right and then we're going to type in again and in this one i'm going to type in double quotation gender okay now again i'm going to type in range and c this this time it's going to be c1 all right c1 dot value
and inside the quotation it's going to be age age all right okay and now so once we've typed in all the range what we're going to do here now is we're going to type in a row as well okay so i'm going to create some space here and i'm going to type in rows and in the rows uh, i'm going to type in the open parenthesis the open parenthesis and then double quotation mark now the double quotation mark is pretty important okay if you have to add double the double quotation mark or else it won't run okay now i'm going to type in one is to one sorry one is to one and then close the double quotation mark and close parenthesis and then dot font dot again bold and then we're going to add in the equal sign after the equal sign we're going to type in true okay now once we've done that you can see that we have this n sub here and we're going to take this here and now we're going to let's we can just end it here but we're going to run it and see if it works okay if we run it you can see that it actually works all right and now we have this uh, injury and if i just align it gender and then age we we have a perfect perfect line here okay but there's a gap here but it it wouldn't matter but what matters is that we've run the code here so you can see here after the end sub they said the range is a2 and then se select all of these these are codes now so this is basically the making macros from scratch okay macro codes from scratch and basics of vba coding so if you want to learn about uh, more advanced uh, VBA, you can uh, get into a course and uh, I've been teaching, I'm teaching the basics of VBA. So this is the only basics of VBA. If you want to learn about the advanced VBAs, you can get into a course and it's really fun once you get the hang of it. Okay. Hello and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at multi-step macro recording. And for that, I have some data here uh, that I'm gonna choose from. And so here you can see if I click here and go to this number uh, section, and you can see that it's specifically told that it's a social security number. Now, if you want it to be it as a zip code, you can select it, or if you want it to be as a phone number you can also do that no problem but i'm going to keep it as social security number so now i'm going to take a look at this one uh, which is the number uh, phone number so if we go to the number section here and you can see that i've specifically selected it as phone number you can select it as anything you want but uh, i'm gonna keep it as phone number so i'm gonna select ok now what I'm going to do here is I'm I want to make this appear as the last number okay to do that I'll show you right now if I press in the equal sign and then if I inside I'm going to type in so now I'm going to type in let's say my bad I'm going to type in right or if I wanted to want a left value to appear I can type in left as well so I'm just going to select the right and after that and after that I'm going to give a bracket here and you can see that they're asking me to uh, 
indicate if it's a text or anything so I'm just gonna select this whole uh, interface and here's the funny part is that if you if I just close parenthesis right now and press enter you can see that it's typed 7 right that's because the 7 is the far right number here that and in this in that case if I want like something else uh, if I want this whole uh, number to appear what I can do here is just give the equal sign type in right uh, use the bracket and select the number uh, text the whole text and then I'm going to um, and now I'm going to type in give a comma and after that I'm going to type in three now once I've typed in three and used the close parenthesis uh, and pressed enter you can see that it's written 987 that's because the 987 is the far right uh, numbers are the three numbers that are in the far right okay so that is how it's done now if you wanted to like add in these numbers and you want them to not appear but appear as some other interface okay so for that I'm going to type in the code again and my bad right and then we're going to type in we're going to type in the bracket and we're going to select the text here and here uh, I'm going to select also 3 all right after that I'm going to close parenthesis and here I want these to appear as hashtags. Uh, to do that, I'm going to type in hash, then use the colon, and then we're going to type in hash again. And here, uh, first we're going to use the quotation marks, uh, which is very important. So I'm using the quotation mark. So I'm going to use the quotation mark here and then I'm going to close the quotation mark right here. Now if I press right now, okay, you can see that there is uh, an error here, right? To solve that, what we're going to do here is we're going to go here and type in an and percentage, all right? So once we've typed in the and percentage, you can see that the values have returned. And now if I press enter, you can see that the numbers that we chose to hide are in hashtag. Now if you want to uh, these to appear as something else like, let's say, star marks, you can also do that as well. You can show them as star marks, no problem or you can also select them as alphabets if you want let's say i want these alphabets to be represented as um, t's and these are well t's so you can do that as well once i type in you can see that they appear as t's all right so that's how you do it and i'm just going to keep these as hashtags There you go. You can see that this is a representative of this value, and these are not appearing as the numbers that we chose, but as appearing as the alphabets that we chose. All right. So now, if you want to like copy this and paste it here, you can do that as well. But there's a problem with that. If I copy it and fill it with every single one of them, it will cause some trouble which will overwrite all the values over here. So to do that, um, to prevent that, what we can do here is we're going to select the cell here and then we're going to copy this. Uh, the, we're going to copy this cell. Once we've done that, uh, we're going to choose this one and then we're going to paste it here. Now, we, we can't just paste it right away. We're going to go to paste options 
and then we're gonna choose the paste values all right and if I press in the paste value you can see that it's the same uh, it's the same as this one so now if we go to the fill header and fill it up now you can see that the values have changed right uh, and the values are different from the other one okay so that's how you do it now I'm gonna do the same thing with these values and we're gonna see what happens so we're going to try it out with this as well alright so same process so I'm gonna do it in here so and I'm not gonna use any of these values because these are uh, actual cell references and I'm gonna use one of these values so in particular I'm gonna use this one alright so let's start it and same process is we're going to first type in right we're going to type in right and from the right side we're going to select uh, this cell use a comma and we're going to type in four because we have four numbers at the far right side after the uh, colon all right now once we've done that we're going to close parenthesis and here we're going to use the hashtags and before that we're going to use the quotation the double quotation mark and type in three hashes then another colon two hashes and another colon all right and now we're going to close the quotation and to uh, for the values to appear we're going to use an and percent okay now once we're done with that we're going to press enter and you can see that the value here is the same as this one and but the values at front at the left side they are appearing as hashtags all right so now we're going to do this again and this time we're going to use the record macro all right so I'm just gonna cut all of these and then select go to the developer tab and select use relative references and start the record macro we're gonna name this macro as JJ and we're gonna select a key for it I'm gonna use control plus J and press on OK so it's recording now and we're gonna start by using the equal sign type in right or in this case we're going to just um, first type in right use the bracket select this cell comma four close parenthesis and then we're going to go here and we're going to use another quotation mark inside type in hashtag three hashtags two hashtags and close the quotation mark right away and also add in the and percent now you can see here that it's appeared but this time we use the record macro now what we're going to do here is we're going to apply this to all of these all right so now what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, copy this all right we're gonna copy this so once we've copied it we're gonna paste it here Now we're not gonna paste it in a normal fashion uh, before that uh, before that we're gonna stop the macro recorder all right then we're gonna copy it again okay once we're copied it we're gonna go here and go to paste options and we're gonna select the paste values all right so select the paste value and you can see here it's the same as this one now I'm going to select all of these 
now you can see that the values have changed right so this is basically the multi-step macro recording and if you face any problems please reach out to us and we're gonna we're here to help you please practice at home as well hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba in this lesson we're going to learn about the macro recorder in our previous lesson we learned about the object oriented programming and what it does and what are the advantage of it so in this lesson we're going to learn about the record macro now you can see here that i have the developer tab opened here and there are some interfaces here and if you look here what i'm uh, putting my mouse here uh, you can see that there is a record macro option here right so what is the record macro suppose i'm doing a function here okay uh, let me delete all this so suppose that i want to type in let's say great and i am I want to place it in, let's say, so center align, and I'm going to edit it like give it bold and turn it italic and give it a underscore. So, and also let me change the colors of it to like this is perfect and even if i want to like increase the size of it so you can see here that the interface is changed right so suppose i want to uh, put this in another sheet and in order to do this if i take another sheet here sheet two if i take here and i want to type i want to type the same thing here so i have to go through all the process that i did earlier like type in great and then change the colors and change all the fonts and stuff uh, it's a lot of hassle right uh, there's a lot of repetitive work going on here uh, to solve that we have the macro recorder all right so if we go back to sheet one, you can see here, this is the macro recorder in the developer tab. So I want to get back to that. All right, now I want to just delete it. And uh, let me go to the developer tab and let's say I want to I want to let's say repeat what i did so i'm going to go here and click on record macro and what it does is that macro uh, whenever we start recording it uh, watches what we do and it records our every movement and uh, saves it for later when we want to use it in another sheet or anything else so once i've clicked on the record macro you can see here there's another window here and it says macro one so we can uh, place it uh, place a name here and i'm going to name it great and there we have a shortcut key i hope uh, there is no shortcut key for what i'm going to place here in your um, excel excel application so let's place a shortcut key since this is uh, uh, if we use a simple shortcut key for instance control s uh, there's a risk that you can overwrite or uh, underwrite anything else uh, whatever you want to save so i'm just going to apply shift plus s and it's going to remember that whenever i press control plus shift plus s it will bring up the same interface and then they're going to ask uh, where where i want to store this macro so it's written here the work this workbook and we have three options here personal macro workbook uh, which you can use that you can only use yourself you know it records it and you can only use it for yourself and there's new workbook and there is this workbook now if i use the this workbook it me it means that this recorded macro 
can be used by anyone else other than me and also by me as well okay so we don't have to add any description so I'm just gonna click on OK now you can see here that it's written stop recording which means uh, whatever I do right now even if I press it like this it's recording it okay it's recording every movement I make so I'm just gonna type in so great and it's already doing everything for me now uh, once I've done mm, making it I'm just gonna click on stop recording once I've stopped recording now I want this interface in this sheet as well right now to do that we're gonna go to the macros here okay uh, this macros option when once we uh, click on it you can see here that the title or the macro that we saved is saved here as great so we're gonna click it and we're gonna press on run so you can see here that it's written great now since I placed the the colors later uh, it shows that only the font is here okay so what we're going to do here we're going to go back and we're going to record it again so I hope you understood this so I'm just gonna go to sheet 2 and I'm going to cut so once I've cut it uh, I'm gonna go back to sheet 1 and I'm going to cut this one as well okay and I'm going to take off the colors as well every single thing and go to the home and select here no fill and go back to how it was all right so now basically what I want to do here is I want to place it in F5 all right I want to place it in F5 to do that I'm gonna go back to the developer tab and press on record macro I'm just gonna save it as great too and we don't know we don't need any shortcut key for now just for example purposes I'm just gonna use this this workbook right now and click on OK so now I'm going to type in great and I'm going to edit this as I want to like place it in the center like this center align and then bold it apply italic underscore and then I want to increase the size to let's say 26 is great all right the size to this okay so there we have it and then I'm going to place a color here I'm going to place yellow or whatever this is so now you can if we go back to the developer tab you can see that it said stop recording so I'm just gonna stop recording and I'm gonna go back to sheet 2 and sheet 2 we placed it in F5 right so we're gonna go here and we're gonna select the macros and here we have the great two and we're gonna run it so you can see that it's the same interface that we did it did in sheet one so that's basically the record macro option now that is basically the record macro option and if you have any problem you can just contact us we're always here to help please practice at home hello and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA so in this lesson we're going to learn about uh, OOP or object oriented programming now what is object oriented programming object oriented programming is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects which can contain data and code the data is in the form of fields often known as attributes or properties and the code is in the form of procedures often known as methods a common feature of objects is that procedures or methods are attached to them and can access and modify the objects data fields in this brand of OOP there is usually a special name such as this are self-used to refer to the current object 
In OOP, computer programs are designed by making them out of objects that impact or interact with one another. OOP languages are diverse, but the most popular ones are class-based, meaning that objects are instances of classes, which also determine their types. Many of the widely used programming languages, such as C++, Java, or Python, are multi-paradigm, and they support object-oriented programming to a greater or lesser degree, typically in combination with imperative procedural programming. So OOP is like another programming language. But so what is its connection to VBA? See, in our last lesson, I, I mentioned that VBA is a code. VBA is basically coding in Excel. You know, you can modify the functions. Like, for instance, one function here is 2, 3, that's 3, or maybe 6, 8, or nine. Okay, so if we want to sum it up, uh, we can just simply use this sum. And then if we just give the bracket here, and we're going to select all of these here, and then we're going to use the close parenthesis, and press enter, and we have our summation here right now i showed you that look at if you take it here look at here and if i add plus you see the value is not recognizable and they're saying that the formula contains unrecognized text so what vba does is that you can modify if i open the vba sheet here or tab here you can modify your codes here OK, you can modify it to understand the plus uh, meaning of the theory. So that's the work of VBA. So OOP is basically using or reorganizing a code that can be reused uh, continuously. You know, it makes it much more easier for the user to use a code uh, continuously. So OOP is basically that, uh, for, an, for example, if I want to choose, like, let's say I4, OK? So I want to choose I4. Now, I want to change the color of this cell. Now, if I just uh, go to my home and uh, press this, it won't happen. Now, the color was changed here. That's because this cell was selected before. Now, if I want to make this I4, um, change the color of this I4, uh, simply I just have to select it. And then if I designate a color, it will change the color. So that's basically the work of OOP, okay, or object-oriented mm, programming. Now, if I want to change the color of this whole block, I have to select the whole system here and then press this and it will change the color and I can change it to any color I want okay so that's basically OOP now there are some there are a few advantages of OOP is that it can be reused you know it records it and it can be reused again so if I want to um, change the color again and I want it no color I just have to press on the no fill and it will go back to normal same thing with this one if i just select it and use the no fill it will go back to normal so that's basically what oop is all right so now let's get on with the next lesson and i'll see you there hello and welcome back to the last lesson on excel vba so in this last lesson we're going to learn about the current region. Now, what is a current region format? So, uh, suppose you want to select a specific range, you know, and then, for an instance, if someone wants to detonate a bomb, they want to see select a 
a certain amount of radius that it's going to impact the bomb okay so it's like that so we're if we want to select this part or if you want to select this part or maybe you want to select all of the parts or maybe this part uh, this that's basically the current region setup okay so for instance if i want to like select a specific cell you know so i want to select all of these but uh, i want one to be exceptional okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to select all of them first i want to select the one that i want to use which is this one after i pressed the data i'm going to press control plus a and you can see that it selected only uh, this part it excluded this part of the whole chart okay so in that regard excel knows that which part to select or which part to exclude okay so you can basically do the same process using the VBA, okay? So what what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the VBA and go to the developer tab and press on Visual Basics and we can see that we have the codes written here from before and from here we're going to start the process, okay? So what we what we're going to do here is we have this end product sheet and this you can see here these are the sheet names and stuff so we're currently on sheet 1 so i'm going to select sheet 1 okay okay so first off i'm going to start by selecting the cell that i want to uh, use the current current region on so I'm going to select this one, which is uh, C9, and I'm going to use this, uh, the VBA to start coding, okay? So I'm gonna write the code here. So I'm gonna start off by typing selection, selection dot current, region dot selection again and now when i type in uh, enter press enter let's see what happens okay there's an error So I'm just going to not type in selection. I'm just going to type in select. Now if I press enter, you can see that it has selected all the current region's contents, okay? So now if I keep the cursor here and then uh, use the VBA again, okay? So it won't work. That's because the cursor needs to be here, okay? So now if I just run it again and go to here and do it you can see that it selected all the datas okay now so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to select this one and i'm going to copy it okay after i've copied it now i'm going to delete it um after i've copied it i'll delete it and then i'm going to select a cursor uh, cell here and just type in anything i want and now i'm going to type in the code for this so i'm not going to use the cursor here this time okay so without using the cursor i'm going to first type in range then open parenthesis double quotation b I'm just, I'm going to select let's say B2 B2 and then close the quotation close parenthesis dot select dot select uh, there's the option here and then I'm going to go down 
and just copy what I pasted earlier, okay? Just paste what I copied earlier, okay? So after that, if I press enter, you can see that without using the cursor, uh, I've already selected it. So you don't need to use the cursor to select it, okay? So these are basically the basics of Excel VBA. And if you want to learn about it, learn the advanced level of VBA, you can get on a course as well. Now, these are not that hard. What you need to do now is to just practice and you'll be there eventually, okay? So if you want to uh, learn the advanced levels of VBA or coding in Excel, you can surely find lots of courses out there, okay? So please practice, and if you have any problem, please reach out to us, all right? Hello, and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about debugging uh, macros. And to get started, we have this chart here, and we're going to select all of these items. And we're going to then go to the developer tab and record macro, all right? so. We're going to go to the developer tab already and uh, we're going to use the record macro first and it's uh, macro 2 and I'm going to use a short key which is control plus R and now I'm going to click on OK. So once I've done that I'm going to select all of these items right here and I'm going to go to the home and then I'm going to edit this a bit and i'm going to use let's say the font would be uh, let's go with arial black and the font size let's go with 16 okay uh, let me align it a bit all right let's align it okay my bad Line every single one of them. Okay. Now, once we've done that, let's uh, tone down the font size a bit. Select all of them, and then tone down the font size to like sixteen or maybe twelve. Okay, twelve is fine. All right. Once we've done that. We're gonna go here and we're gonna change the color. Let's give the color like and we're going to use this color. Okay, this color is good. All right, once we've done that, we're going to go to the VBA. And uh, before going to the VBA, we're gonna go to this recorder and stop recording. Now, once we've stopped recording we're gonna go to the visual basic now here you can see that there is this one which we selected right the macro 2 uh, which has the front aerial black okay and the size let's go to the home you can see the size is 11 same as this one size is 11 right okay so this is basically this uh, macro here which has been applied. And like before, I told you that there are a lot of unnecessary codes here that we don't need. All right, these false, 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 these are all unnecessary codes. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we already stopped the macro recorder and we're going to add another macro over it. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go back to this uh, interface here. You can see that we have. Uh, a macro here and this is the macro that we're using right now and what we're going to do here is we're going to create another macro okay and we're going to create another macro by just go on and start recording uh, the macro we're going to record the macro again and then we're going to select this one and once we've selected this one uh, we can just go and uh, go to the VBA and you can see that there is an um, interface here and this is the macro that we're doing here right now 
so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to home and change the font again to let's say you know we can give this one and we're going to change the color to uh, so once we're we've changed the color we can go back and as you can see that there is um these interfaces and there are a lot of unnecessary code here that we don't need and we're going to uh, edit some of them i'm going to show you now the one thing about macros is that once you once you are have edited a macro there's no way to undo it okay so here if i go to the developer tag and if we're going to stop the recording now and here in the vba you can see that there are a lot of codes i already told you that these are most of them are unnecessary so what we can do about it is that we can just delete them just straight up delete them or we can just use the quotation marks to comment them okay so i've already told you that once you uh, edit a macro it's uh, once you apply a macro actually it's pretty uh, difficult to undo it i mean it's near impossible so uh, for instance if i do this the macro in this project are disabled please refer okay so once I do this, uh, it's not going to happen right now because there's some problems, technical problems going on. But uh, once you uh, apply the macros, uh, it's actually pretty difficult to undo it. And for that reason, you have to like keep a backup and a backup of the backup for ready to use, you know, because it's really uh, a risky thing to not have a backup. So that is the case. So the thing is, uh, I'm going to show you how to do all these, and I, most of these, like I said, most of these um, macros or code macros are pretty unnecessary, you know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete some, like this one here, which needs doesn't need to be stayed here. So we're going to delete that one, and then after here, I'm going to show you the functions of debugging okay now debug there's already a ribbon here called debug here if you go into it there are a lot of options here and if you don't want to go with that you can just go here in this uh, space and just click on debug or maybe you can also just go here and customize okay once you go to customize you can also uh, go to commands toolbar or commands and options in the commands you can see here there's an option called debug okay and from here there are all these options you can see here you can just take them and drag them to this place to be placed here you can just place them here whichever function you need okay just take it and drag them here all right so that's how you actually do it i'm going to close it right now so these are the tools for debugging okay okay so the first thing what i'm going to do here since i've uh, explained what the code is and i've edited a code so i'm going to use a code or a tool that is pretty important that's going to edit every single macro individually and first off i'm going to take some data let's go here and let's for instance take some this data or maybe just take these datas all right and copy and create another sheet original data and just paste them here all right so once we've done that we have these datas and now we're going to use a tool okay and which tool is that we're going to go to the vba here and you can see so no, now that we've got our chart here we're gonna go to the developer tab and record the macro here and macro 4 and we can check the stuff here which is macro 4 here and we're going to select all of this and you can see this so I'm going to minimize this 
to see what's happening in the VBA as well, okay? At real time. And let's adjust this. All right, now you can see, we can see everything that's going on here. All right, now, whatever we do here, it's gonna change it here. We can see the codes wide open, all right? So what I'm going to do here is we're going to use a, a tool of the debugging called step into, all right? So whenever I uh, use this, uh, for instance, I'm going to click on this one, and this is the macro that is uh, helping us. And I'm going to select this step into, okay? So now what I'm going to do here is I want to use the step into function, okay? So to do that, we're going to select first, let's align this, all of these, all right? We're going to align all of these properly and then we're going to select this and we're going to use this step into. Oh, and before that, we're going to have to um, go to the developer. Uh, it was already recording. Now we're going to use uh, another one. So we're going to record another macro. And now we're going to select this. After we've selected it, we're going to type here. And this is the macro that we're using. And we're going to go to home and select uh, the fonts as Arial Black and let's tone down the okay and now here is our macro we're going to use the step into option okay the step into tool all right so i'm going to use the uh, step into function tool to see which are the ones that we want to skip all right so once we're done with that you can see that it's already individually saved okay so if i want i can just delete all of these i can just delete all of these and uh, which are not necessary so if i click on the step into again now you can see that these have been individually saved right so that is the case with um this macros and i hope this was understandable and i uh, i'm going to see you in the next lesson okay hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba so in our previous lesson we learned that how to sort and uh, sales records so in this lesson we're going to learn about protecting and formatting um, these charts okay so what is protecting and formatting yeah, for instance i select this cell and here you can see that i can edit it right if i put on protecting i wouldn't be able to edit this so first to do this uh, i'm going to first you can see here in sheet one i have the same data here right so we're going to work on this and what we want to do here is uh, first, we're going to use also the macro recorder here, and we're not going to use the use relative references, okay? So don't use this. And now, so now what we're going to do is go to the developer tab, and I'm going to use the record macro, okay? Once I click on the record macro, you can see that there is this macro 3 and also, they're going to want me to uh, use a short key. So in this case, I'm going to use Control plus J because I don't have anything else. Um, so once I've done that, uh, it started to record. And now I'm going to go to the home. All right. Once I go to the home, I want to select a specific type of uh, charts of whatever there is here. OK, so I'm going to go here and find and select okay once i click on that i'm gonna go to the go to special i'll click on it and here you can see there are some interfaces comments constants and formulas and other things so i'm gonna click on constants 
and for instance i want i don't want errors i don't want logicals or i don't want any numbers as well i only want the text okay so i'm going to click on okay so the text have been copied here all right and uh, once they have been selected i'm going to go to okay my bad so once they're selected, I want them to apply here in this sheet one. All right. So I've selected them, but then I'm going to go to the format here. And here you can see that there is uh, an option called lock cells. So this is usually uh, locked and you can unlock it. So once I've clicked on it, you can see that they have been locked. And now I'm going to go back to the developer tab. And I'm gonna select the stop recording. I'm gonna stop the recording here and then go to sheet one. All right. So you can see that these have been selected. All right. The macro has been recorded here as macro three. All right. So I'm just gonna use this one. And once I go to the sheet one, I can simply press control plus J to apply the macro. If I select the control plus J, and you can see that it has been selected. All right, so that's how you record uh, sort out. So now what we're going to do here, you can see here that the um, macro that we use has been applied. Now we're going to protect it. Okay. How are you going to protect it? For instance, if I click on this here, you can see here, uh, you can edit this, right? You can edit this, but uh, once we protect it, we won't be able to edit it. So we're going to protect it and we're going to do the whole process again. So I'm going to go back to the sample sales record. And here I'm going to first uh, select uh, record macro. And the macro four has been selected, so I'm gonna use control, uh, say control plus G, and click on OK. So once it start recording, uh, I'm gonna go back to the home, and find and select, go to special, and select the constants. Only select the text, OK, and then I'm gonna go back to the format. After going back to this format, I'm going to log the cells and then I'm going to go to this protect sheet. All right. So this is important. We're going to go select the protect sheet. And here you can see that select locked cells, select unlock cells. All right. Now, if you want, you can also apply a password for it as well. So uh, if, you, if you don't want it, you can't, you don't have to. But let's say I'm going to give it uh, one, two, three, four, simple password. Okay, they're going to ask you to re enter the password. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, so once we're done with that, uh, I'm going to go back to the developer tag, tab, and now I'm going to stop the recording of the macros. All right, so the macro has been recorded, and I'm going to go to sheet one. Here, I'm going to press control plus G to apply the macro again. All right, so it has been applied now, you can see here. So once I click, you can see here, uh, whenever I try to click it and if I want to edit it, I cannot. The cell or chat you're trying to change is on a protected sheet. So that's the thing, you can protect it like that, all right? So that's the whole process of formatting and protecting your macros using the macro recorder, all right? Pretty simple. Uh, basically, if you try it one or two times, you will be able to get a hold of it, alright? So, I hope this was helpful, and if you have any problem, please reach out to us, and I will see you in the next lesson, alright? Hello, and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the range. So, what is the range? Uh, suppose you want to... Um, distinguish your cells or any other thing from software to software program to program so you can use the range option so in range uh, suppose these cells I, I am clicking on them right here and I want to modify them right now okay so I can just click them right like this but uh, I'm going to use it uh, use VBA to modify that so I'm going to use the range 
function okay so what I want to do here is I want to go to this VBA and I'm going to click on view and just open the immediate window once I click on it this window will appear here the immediate window okay and here we're going to write our code so now what we're going to do here is we're going to write a code uh, that is going to indicate that is going to indicate one of these uh, cells here okay so I want to refer to as let's say B3 okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the immediate uh, window and type in range and then open parenthesis and inside I'm going to type in let's say B3 uh, B3 okay now if I only type in B3 and close parenthesis it won't work okay it will show an error here so for that what I have to do here is I have to go back and use a double quotation mark and then type in B3 okay so currently my uh, cell is in like C7 right and I want it to go to B3 and for that I'm going to close the double quotation and then close parenthesis and then I have to type in dot select okay I can just choose it from here and once I'm done with that so after I'm done typing the code I'll, I'll just have to simply type in enter and you can see here my cell is in B3 right now okay so it's that simple if you want to use the range uh, function you can just do it from here and do it manually using the VBA so now that we've understand how to write this code and how to select these cells more we're going to type in some more code and see what happens okay and we're going to go with let's say again with range going to go with range double quotation and double quotation and a1 not a1 wait uh, i'm going to select let's say a3 okay a3 and then dot uh, let's see what happens if we go with let's say offset maybe yeah let's go with offset select offset oh that there's this error so let's go with select okay we'll just go with select dot select so this time if I press enter like my cursor is here right and here if I just press enter it will take me to a3 again okay and here if I want to like add another range like let's go with this range so if I apply another range let's go with 
Okay, we just cut off this one. So we'll type in it again, no problem. So we typed in range and then I want it, let's go with, so we'll go with, let's say B, B4, okay? So let's go with B4. B, oh, uh, remember to give the double quotation, then apply the B4, double quotation again, and close parenthesis, dot, range and then open parenthesis double quotation and then b3 we'll go with b3 close the double quotation close parenthesis dot select okay now you can see that it moved to c6 okay so this uh this code didn't happen but it will happen from time to time okay so this was basically the running of the codes in uh, H, uh sorry excel vba okay so we're gonna move into the next lesson right away all right hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba so in this lesson we're going to learn about what recorder is and versus the manual one so basically in codings you can see here these are all interfaces that are applied here but you can only see the text and the outer part the inner parts are basically all codes right but we can't see them so that's basically the codes and if we want to see the codes we have to uh, use some other uh, interface as well so in this case if we open this excel you can see here the first ribbon that's going to appear it's going to be the home interface right but to apply with uh, VBA uh, to see the codes, we have to go to the developer tab and here you can find the visual basic. Okay, so once we click on it, the window appears as visual basic and right down here, you can see that the code that we've written earlier, right? So this is basically the VBA where the codes are written and the codes are saved as well. And you can see here that this um, chart that we're doing here is basically the same one that I've been using for the past two or three lessons. So I'm just going to use this, uh, which is not a problem as well. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to first go to the VBA here, and I like to keep the VBA as minimized as possible uh, so that I can see what's going on here and I, I can keep the window open right beside to see what's going on. All right. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, first uh, go to the developer tab, okay, and uh, I'm going to select the record macro. We're not going to use the use relative references or any of these. We're going to first record the macro. I'm going to name the macro as, let's say, color, okay, and I'm going to give it like control plus Z. All right. After I've done that, it started recording. Now I'm gonna go back to our uh, home here. So now that I've um, recorded, I'm started recording the macro. Okay, I'm going to go to go back to the home, and first uh, let's check on the macros or Visual Basics. If I open it, you can see here there's this module. And once I click on the module, you can see that there are so many codes here, okay? We're going to get back to that later. And first here, we're going to go to 
the home and we're gonna select all of these all right let's select all of these now i want them to uh, be colored let's say i'm gonna keep this color So I'm going to keep this color and then I'm going to, let's say, let's put it to bold and uh, maybe italic as well. And I'm also going to change the font size. Uh, let's say uh, your client told you to apply another font to your uh, chart. Okay, like they want, let's say, this impact font. All right. Okay, not maybe not impact, but let's say they want Arial Black, okay? So they want this font, and I've given them the font, all right? So now, so now that maybe if I uh, want to change the borders because I can't see the borders here, uh, I'm going to select. The borders here. Okay, so the borders are here now. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to go to the. So now that we've done this, uh, we can go here and you can see that the developer tab is start st still recording, right? So we're going to keep it at that. And if I go to the Visual Basic, uh, you can see that there are there are these codes. All right. So these codes are basically you can see here. Uh, it starts with sub color, and if we go down, uh, you can see it's written end sub. All right. So it's basically like all these are codes. This is the basic thing, which is that these are all codes. All right. And here you can see that color macro. It's it's green keyboard shortcut is control plus z and it is green now why is this green now if i go here and type in let's say um green and you can see that it turns green as well okay so these are basically all codes uh, which are uh, using so excel normal and then uh, range is 15 or i5 sorry and then cells select interior x solid and then other other stuff as well okay so whatever whatever we apply it here we all have it here as well so let me just uh line these all up okay just align them properly every single one of them should be aligned properly okay now that's much more better right okay so that's basically the codes that are run here, running here, all right. So I'm just gonna go and stop recording the macro and it's all saved right now. And if I want, uh, let's say, I, I'm going to apply some other code. Let's go to sheet one and I'm gonna select some from here. And just select this this part. Copy and then then paste them, align them. All right. So if I paste them here, and you can see if I go and run the Visual Basics, uh, they will run here as well. Sheet four, sheet three. And the module here, you can see here these are all the codes that are uh, selected here. Okay. So now that we've got our chart, we're going to do what we're going to do here is we're going to select all of them and we're going to go to the home. Uh, before selecting, uh, you got to remember to record the macro because I already forgot about it, but I'm going to do it again. So I'm just gonna press on record macro and I'm going to name this macro 6 and I'm going to use control plus M. Alright, 
and now I'm gonna go back to the home and I'm going to select every single one of these and I'm gonna change them to like let's say this one should go as let's let's go with Cooper black and once we apply the Cooper black we're gonna change the font size to like let's say 20 uh, that's too much let's go with 14 or maybe let's go with 16 all right all right and then we're gonna align them properly once they are aligned uh, we're gonna change the colors to like let's go with this color and bold italic all right now once we're done with that we're going to go and open the visual basics let's go to the developer tab and tap on visual basics and once we're here so basically you can see that i've clicked on the module one right and here is the code now this is the code for sheet two all right and for sheet three you can see here that there has been a line break here in sub and then sub macro six now we named this macro macro six right now this is macro six as well and you can see here that macro six macro keyboard shortcut control plus m which i selected a bit earlier cell select all of these are codes and most of them are useless codes all right so so once we've uh, done with that uh, you can see we're going to take a look at the codes here and if we go up you can see this is the macro that has been using this on here and what we're going to do here is you can see that there are a lot of code and i told you that uh, most of this code are unnecessary right so you can see here cell select application cut copy mode false with selection and the name cop cooper black size 11 now these are pretty important but the rest of them are pretty uh, unnecessary so what we can do here is we can just delete all of them and then we can uh, delete this one as well okay and cell select can stay uh, just be cell select and then we can also delete this end width but uh, just okay so so now that i've done that okay we've taken a look at a look at the codes here and i've deleted it uh, some unnecessary codes what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create i'm going to stop recording this first and then i'm going to create another macro and i'm going to go back to the sample sales record and i'm going to take another sample here like this this part here and copy it and we're going to paste it here as well all right paste it there you go and let's align them okay once we're done we've done that we're going to press on the record macro again and we're going to save it as macro 7 and after that we're going to use let's say control plus d okay now that we've done that we're going to let's say um go to the vba the visual basics now you can see here there's another uh, one here which is sub macro 7 which is this one right and here we can just see all these codes that are selected here and and we're going to select um let's go to home and select all of them after we've selected it we're going to change the font to like 16 and change the font to let's say um arial narrow okay or maybe arial let's go with agency fb okay and now that i've done that we're going to open the vba window here in the vba window you can see that 
uh, this is the sub macro 7 and we don't really need all of these codes we just have to keep let's say I'm going to delete this one these codes all right after we've done that would what we're going to do here is we're going to copy and paste this sub macro and if we go to the developer tab use the macros and select macro 6 run you can see there's an error here that's because we cannot run another macro on this here okay so compile error expected expected end with okay so that is basically the VBA uh, the manual versus macro recording and I hope this was helpful and I'm going to discuss more in the next lessons and I'll see you in the next lesson okay hello and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA so in this lesson we're going to learn about the selection and colors and other formatting in our last lesson we learned about the range so in this lesson let's start with first we're going to open the developer tab and here we've got the visual basic so we have these visual basic VBA window here and I've minimized it so that we can work with it much more uh, efficiently now you can see that I've closed up all the modules here if I go to the module one or two these are the codes so we don't need these uh, we're just gonna work on uh, let's say this is sheet 4 so we're gonna work on sheet 4 okay all right so <clears throat> once we get the sheet 4 first we need uh, the immediate window okay so to get that window we're gonna go to view and here we have the immediate window so when we click on it you can see here that we've got the immediate window and there are some codes written that I previously showed in our previous lesson if I go up there they increase so I'm just gonna cut all this up I'm just gonna delete it because we don't need it right now so we're gonna start off so after we go to the immediate window we're gonna type in a code uh, first uh, I'm going to type in a value here so I'm just gonna use f8 here and let's type in let's say great great and I will align this okay so once we've typed in great uh, we're gonna go to the VBA and we're going to type in a code and we're going to select range range and then we're going to use the open parenthesis inside we're going to type in quotation and we're going to refer the cell uh, which is f8 okay um, f eight close the quotation and then close parenthesis and then type in dot select okay so once we've selected you can see that uh, the the cell has went, gone to this f8 cell okay our cursor and then we're going to type in selection now the thing here is that whenever we type in anything if we type in anything it will take us to f8 because it's this is an absolute reference uh, that's because that's that's why it's going to that's why it's going to take uh, you to f8 because it's an absolute reference and whenever we uh, whatever we type in and uh, whatever we say it will take us to f8 okay so now if I want to change uh, 
the font or anything I want of this value of F8. I can simply type in here the code and to do that I'm just going to type in dot font dot bold. So I want to make it bold so I'm just gonna type in bold equal true. Now if you take a look at if you take a look at the value here once I press enter the value has turned uh, bold. You can see here that the value has turned bold. Now if I change this true from true to false, if I type in false and type in enter, the bold font is disappearing. It's unaffecting the value. Okay, so let's try something else now. So let's say that I want to change the value, the whole value of this uh, whole cell, okay? To do that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in first dot value. Take the whole value and then equal sign. Inside, I'm going to type in with the quotation mark, the double quotation mark. And then I'm going to type in, let's say, goat okay goat now i'm going to press enter oh sorry there was a mistake i'm going to give double quotation here so now you can see that the value has changed to goat okay so once we've added the name we're going to go down and we're going to add something else like uh, you can also i mean if you want you can change to change this to anything because we're not going to change anything here because we don't want to change it if you want you can change this to anything like uh mars okay mars or jupiter Uh, and it will just apply automatically. You can see here it applies automatically. So I'm just gonna keep. Let's just stick to the moon. Okay. So after that, we're going to select the color. Okay. Uh, to select the color, we're going to type in again selection. dot font dot color and then we're going to give the equal sign and now we're going to apply a color or you can also apply the hex color which is like if you go uh, to the color section here and uh, type in uh, select the more colors you can see that there are these colors that are here. You can select any type of color here and any type of hex color here. So we're going to go to the custom and you can see that there is this color model called RGB. Okay, so we're going to use the hex color. Okay, so I'm going to first select, let's select, um, let's go with this green color. Okay, uh, this yeah this green this green is good or maybe this green okay and this is the hex code okay so we're going to copy it just copy this okay okay we're going to go with no fill first and we copied the code and we're going to go to the vba and we're going to type in uh, so you don't have to use the hashtag just use this uh, use the quotation mark. All right. Oh, showing it's showing an error. So and now okay. 
Okay, so let's try a different color. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this one and I'm going to try out the RGB. Let's go with RGB and open parenthesis. Type in 255, comma, 0, and then comma again, and then 2. Five, five, okay, and then close parenthesis. So once we do that, you can see that the color has changed on this um, the value. All right. So once we've changed the font color and uh, we've applied this value, we can we can go here and and if you want to change it to anything else any other color you can do it as well or if you want to change the interior you can do it as well like if you actually want to change the interior you can just uh, go delete all this uh, delete up to this one and then type in interior and then type in theme and then type in theme oh i'm sorry it's okay uh, i'm just gonna go here and type in theme color then space equal sign space and now type in excel now you might see this uh, interface like excel in many many places okay so this is a really common uh, code uh, to place Excel. So after placing Excel, I'm going to type in theme color dark. And then I'm going to give it nine. And uh, well, you can see that the runtime error is 438, so I'm just going to tone it down a bit. Uh, let's first go with 1, okay? Oh, okay. So, I guess we have some mistake here, okay. Now, let's hit it. So, theme color dark 1 is pretty light, so we're going to go with 2. Well, you can see that it becomes dark, but not enough. Let's go with three. Okay, so the limit is two. Okay, so we're going to keep it at two. All right. Now you can see that the theme color dark is two now. So that's basically it with selection and colors. So I hope this lesson was useful and please practice. If you have any problem, please reach out to us. We're always here to help and I will see you in the next lesson. Hello and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about sorting and filtering. And in order to do that, I took this table and I created this um, chart. And with this, we're going to look at how we're going to apply the sorting and filtering. Now, in this lesson, we're not going to need these macro record uh, we're going to need the re macro recorder but we're not going to use the uh, relative references okay so what we're going to need is if you go to data and here is the sort uh, option we're going to need that now here i want to sort out let's say a few few topics here right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to select click at this place and it's going to select all of the chart and i'm going to go to the sort okay before that we're going to go to developer and press on the record macro all right so once i press on the record macro and i'm going to name this sort i'm going to use control plus s and click on okay and make sure that you have no macros left from before okay so it's already started recording now we're going to uh, apply 
the sorting so I'm gonna click on this it's gonna select the whole chart and then we're gonna go to data and click on sort now here we have this um, this uh, interface here and if you want you can add more levels here all right and so we're going to sort by let's say item type okay this is the item type and we're going to then sort it by sales channel and then we're going to sort it by the order date okay after that we're going to press ok now you can see that the item type has been organized and the rest of them are also organized as well all right so the date we organized as well order date okay so now what i want to do here is i want to create a button that would indicate these topics one of these topics whatever i want to select so i want to create a button here how do i do that to do that i'm going to go to here in the insert and i'm going to use one of these all right so uh, if you remember we were recording in the macro right and we have our macro saved here so we're going to use that as well so i'm going to go to the insert and select this and i'm going to create a box here all right so just simply create a box here and i'm going to select this one the sort and i'm going to open it so here you can see that there is a button here which is named button one so we're, we're going to rename it and we're going to name it to let's say whatever we want to select it so i'm going to select let's say the order prior or maybe i should use the order id okay so i'm going to use the order id and so now that i've done that you can see here that whenever i play uh, press this button the whole interface appears because i was recording only the macro uh, only the whole stuff so now i want to open another one so i'm going to use the record macro again i'm just gonna name that and then we're gonna go to the data and sort sorted by let's say sales priority and country and then order id all right and we're gonna set this to z to a largest to smallest and that could stay like that so now i'm going to stop the recording okay the macro has been saved we can see it here the macro 2 and then we're going to place another button so we're going to go to the insert and select this one and then we're going to create another button right here like this and we're going to set this macro all right okay so it's named button 4 but we're going to name this let's say let's name this sort okay all right now whenever i press it you can see that this interface comes up okay so that is how you use the buttons and it it is very useful for excel hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba and in this lesson we're going to learn about the use of relative references now we've already learned about the use of macro recorder and we're going to use the macro recorder today as well so first i'm going to show you what the macro recorder is briefly okay so suppose i'm going to type something here okay so i'm gonna first record a macro for that i'm gonna go if you're in the home tab you have to go to the developer tab and then go to the visual basics okay 
not the visual basics you just have to go here now the visual basics is basically the code where uh, we're gonna write all the codes here so we're not gonna need this in this lesson so I'm just going to go use the record macro and beneath that we can see that there is use relative references now to get started we're going to record a macro start recording a macro first okay so once I press in the record macro you can see here that there's an interface here a window which is called record macro and they're asking me to change the macro name okay and we're gonna give a shortcut key as well so the macro name I'm just gonna give it let's say background okay and for the shortcut key I'm just gonna keep it as control plus Z because I don't have anything saved as control plus Z and I'm going to click on OK now the recorder has already started okay to to record it once I click in the D8 tab it's recording everything right now so I'm just gonna type in let's say anything I want okay so I've typed in this the macro has recorded this okay once I've I'm done typing I'm just gonna go and stop the macro recorder once I've stopped the macro recorder if I want to check the macros just Chris just click on these macros and you can see here there's this uh, one called background okay for instance if I want to paste it in some place else like another sheet here and if I just want to paste it I just go to the macro and then just click on run you can see that it's it's been pasted in the same space where I recorded it like in D8 okay so now that I have pasted it now I'm going to show you how to use the use relative references okay now I can paste this anywhere using the short key as well so I saved the short key as like if I go to another sheet and if I use only control plus Z for instance control plus Z you can see here it gets pasted automatically because I saved it as control plus Z alright now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create some uh, references okay now the difference between recording macro and use relative references is big is that you can only record the macro in a single cell okay but if you use the use relative references you can uh, record it like multiple cells you can record it for instance for example I'm just going to type in let's say uh, fire earth water air okay these are the name of the elements so I'm just going to record uh, first I'm going to for since I've typed in this this is um, the elements I'm going to first start recording the macro okay so use the macro recorder and save it as elements and then set up a shortcut key which is going to control plus H or maybe E control plus E is fine okay now we're going to use the use relative references okay so once this is in use we're going to type in the elements fire water earth and air okay once we've done that we're going to stop the recording also the use relative references okay and now if I go to the macro it's it's already recorded so if I go to the macro you can see that it's elements and if I click on run you can see that all the elements they are uh, being pasted here so if I want to paste it here as well I just have to press on control plus E well you can see that it has been pasted 
just like that okay so that is the function of use relative references i hope this was helpful and please practice at home and i will see you in the next lesson okay hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba so in this lesson we are going to learn about the score and value okay so we're almost at the end of this course so this is these are just the basics of these uh, the course and uh, we'll be ending the course pretty soon because we've covered all of the subjects almost and in this lesson we're going to learn about the values and score so in order to do that I already recorded a macro here which is this one okay it's already recorded and if I go to the macros you can see here there's macro one saved here so I'm not gonna open it or apply it uh, even if I do apply it you can see here if I just click it here it will be applied so I'm not gonna do it now I'm going to open the visual basics now you can see here in the visual basics once there is the sheet one here and the module one here as well okay so you can see that the range is d7 uh, this is d7 and so where it's written here where is it the same thing so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the immediate window here all right and in the immediate window we're going to write down some codes and if you don't know how to open the me immediate window just uh, go to the view and go to immediate window and open it so after that what we're going to do here is we're going to type in some code all right so we're going to first type in range range then we're going to use the open parenthesis use the quotation mark d which is d7 okay d7 and close the quotation double quotation and then close parenthesis and then dot value you have the suggestion here you can just click it there you go it's applied so now you've already seen this in, our, in my previous lessons that if I just uh, keep it like this and just press enter it will show a compile error right so we can't just keep it like that we, there's still some work to do and even if I use uh, the equal sign and then if I don't you apply any value or if I apply just a question mark and then uh, press enter you can see it says compile error as well so we're not gonna keep it like that we're gonna add something so I'm not gonna add any uh, value here or the question mark what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the question mark and place it in front okay once I place it in front and then so the reason why it's uh, showing this error is because uh, I added this equal sign so I can't add this equal sign if I just delete this equal sign and press enter well you can see that there is this uh, value here which is says what is it same where is it uh, the same value that I typed here okay so you can see that if we add a question mark in front of this code it will show the value and we have to indicate the cell number as well so it will indicate the values as well okay and if I if I like change the value here like if I just let's say where is it I'm going to delete the where okay so if I delete the where here's the visual basic and go to the visual basic and Go to the visual basic and just type in well you can see that the text here the value is is it okay the where is missing all right now if i want to change the value here the whole value of this 
um, this cell. What I can do here is you've already seen it in my previous lessons, right? Like range, okay? Type in range, open parenthesis, and then double quotation, and just select the cell number to like seven, and then close parenthesis. Sorry, close quotation and then D7. And then we, after we close the parenthesis, we're going to type in the value or dot value, right? Dot value. Yes, select this one. And we're going to type in the equal mark and inside we're going to type in let's say first we give what i gotta give the uh quotation double quotation and we're gonna type in let's say sun and close this and once we've done that you can see after I pressed the enter, uh, the value here has changed to sun. Okay, so before it was where is it, and then we turned it into is it, and now it's the sun. Okay, so it's as simple as that changing the code using the immediate window in the VBA. Okay, all right, now that we've uh, done the value, now we're going to learn about the clear. Okay. So the clear is basically you can clear whatever the value is or anything or any format you want to clear, okay? And the value was uh, the, you know, we can change the value and whatever, okay? So we're going to see the clear, what the clear is, and we're going to, for example, for example, we're going to type in, let's say, let's go with range again range and then um, open parenthesis and we're going to type in the double quotation now you, you have to remember that every time you want to refer a cell you have to add the double quotation okay and then d7 my bad d7 double quotation again close parenthesis and dot this time we're going to type in clear okay so you can see here there is the clear we're going to select it and now that we've selected it we're going to we're going to type in enter and you can see in the excel that the value the sun has disappeared so that's basically the clear so this was the value and clear option of excel vba so if you have any trouble please reach out to us and uh, we're always here to help and please practice at home as well okay hello and welcome back to another lesson on excel vba uh, in our last lesson we learned about the formatting and protecting of the charts and in this lesson we're going to learn about the vba okay the basics of vba and uh, as we move forward we're going to go to the advanced levels of vba so in this lesson first we're going to start off with recognizing what what the vba uh, window is so the vba is in the developer tab okay so when you open your excel you will uh, most likely be in the home uh, home ribbon but you have to go to the developer and then select visual basic so once you select the visual basic you can see here that there has been a window and i've already covered this window in our first lesson but this uh, i'm going to cover it again now so basically this window in this window we're going to write some codes and we're going to apply those codes in this uh, in this chart okay 
So the Visual Basic is basically Microsoft's Visual Basic for application. So VBA in short. And you can see here that we have Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3, and this workbook as well. And the module here is where you save your macros, okay? So these are all the macros that are saved here. So the module one, if you don't have any macros saved, then you would have not gotten any of these uh, sheet one, sheet two, okay? Since you have macros saved, like for instance, if I go back to the VBA and click on macros, you can see here macro two, macro three, macro four, sort, all these type of uh, macros are saved here, okay? So now we're going to uh, get introduced with these um, basic applications. And here you can see the file and other stuff, edit, view. So we're going to go to this um, view interface and we're going to select immediate window, which you can also command by control plus G. So once we've done that, you can see here there's an interface here and we're going to write some code here, all right? So to write some code, first we're going to select some anything from here. So I'm just going to select let's say this serial which is C17 and we're going to start writing some code here, okay? So what we can do here first if you want to write any code, you have to start with a question mark, all right? So once I start with the question mark, I'm going to type in range and then open parenthesis. All right. So since there is this range, it's written here cell one, cell two as range. So I've already selected like C17, right? So I'm going to use like the double quotation mark and type in C17 okay and then I'm gonna close the quotation mark and close parenthesis after that uh, once I've written that I'm gonna go down and you can see that it's written serial it's because I did uh, I indicated that C17 is going to be selected that's why whatever content or values is in C17 it's appearing as it's written there okay so once we've done with that once we're done with that we're gonna go to uh, here and we're gonna write another code question mark and type in work sheets dot and we're gonna select count all right all right and down here, we're going to select, it's already selected three, all right? Okay. So now that we've written the code, you can see here that if I go to view, there are a lot of more interfaces here, like local window, watch window. Uh, we're gonna get into that in our later lessons. And immediate window, which we uh, wrote the code on, okay? And if I select more here, file, edit, view, and then other stuff formatting, uh, there's so many things that you can try here. So that's basically uh, VBA and we're gonna do some more in the next lessons and I hope this was understandable and if you have any problem, please reach out to us and I'll see you in the next lesson, okay? Hello and welcome back to another lesson on Excel VBA. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the grammars in VBA. So to look at the grammars, you can see here that I have some info here about some uh, it could be something okay so here i'm going to uh, create something we're going to record some macros as well so firstly i'm going to go to the home and in the home i'm going to go to insert and i'm going to insert some sheet columns all right uh, once i do the sheet columns and here i can add any info and i'm also going to add some let's say insert sheet rows okay i'm gonna need some rows as well now after that uh, what i'm going to do here is take this uh, 
Okay. So I'm going to delete this one. All right. And then this is, I'm going to also take this, copy and paste it here. Okay. And I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to put this here, uh, here. All right. So copy and paste. So once I've done that, uh, I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to type in here names, all right? Names and our name, and then I'm going to apply bold to this block. I'm going to make it bold, and I'm going to align this in the center, all right? So I've aligned this in the center, and I'm going to give this names. And I'm going to name this, let's say, Martin. And then I'm going to name this here, let's say, let's go with Steve. And then Carl. And for the female, I'm going to go with Jenna. And Luke, and I'm going to name this guy, let's say Tony. All right, so once I've named them, now we have this chart, okay? And now I'm going to name this place, let's say Injury Location. And then I'm going to align this. Okay, this is going to be gender, and this is going to be age. Since these are all titles, I'm going to bold them, all of them, and also this one as well. Okay, once I've done that, let's adjust them, align them perfectly. And I'm going to place this. This is in the center and gender as well. Okay, age, let's go with, all right. Well, all right. Okay, let me select every single one of these and I'm going to align them in the middle, okay? All right, now that's much more better. So now that I've done that, I have to first go to the developer and record the macro, okay? So I'm going to open another sheet here, and in the sheet 2, what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to record the macro, and I'm going to go back to sheet 1 and take all this, copy, and go to sheet 2 and paste them, alright? So the macro has been recording, alright? Now I'm going to go to the visual basics and go to module 1 and you can see that these are this is the macro one that we've selected here okay now so once I've done that I'm going to take only this and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it right here all right and you can see that these are the ones that I took earlier and now I'm going to run this in the visual basics. So now that I've uh, done this, okay, uh, when I open the VBA, you can see that this is the VBA of this part of the sheet, okay? So whenever I like, uh, if I go here and take a look at these macros or the codes you can see there is sheet one and then there is range now these are all the grammars in excel okay this is the grammars that is uh referring to i was referring to okay so if i select this one uh step into okay uh, it's gonna review now you can see uh, in the in the sheet here that you can see in the sheet that uh, it has been marked and if I go down sheet one 
then if I go down range A to D7, you can see here A to D7, D7 here, A and then D7 here, okay? Uh, and it's selected here with the range after the bracket, the open parenthesis, and then we have the quotation mark. Inside we have the A1 and then the D7, and then quotation mark again, and then the close parenthesis. All right, and then we have dot select. Then if we press on the step into again, or if you, you can also use the step into uh, by uh, pressing the F8 button, okay? It's written over here. So you can just press F8 to uh, select the step into function. Now, sheets, uh, the reason it's in sheet two is because uh, if you go to sheet two, you can see here, and if you go to like the VBA here, and you can see that it is being selected, right? So that is basically the function of grammars. And another thing is these N12 and then B2 to D7, these are all referred to as verbs, you know, grammars and verbs. So it makes sense, uh, pretty sense, right? And that's that's basically the grammars of VBA. And we're going to go into the next lesson. And in the le next lesson, we're going to learn about how to create macros from scratch, all right? So I'll see you in the next lesson, all right?